Hey guys, my first live video here, trying to work out the best light. Uh, here we go. And I actually don't know whether I can actually see comments. We'll figure that out as we go. But um, let me just give you a bit of view out of the office. I don't know if you can see it, but it's snowing. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I love those... Um, those big, hi David, uh, no, those big white uh, fluffy snowflakes. There's nothing quite like that. Welcome Jan, welcome William. So I'll just turn this back around. Hi Blake, from Japan, how about that? Liberty, hi, all the way from New Zealand. So I'm just keeping an eye on the time. We're right on 10 o'clock. And so I asked the question, what is the biggest challenge people have with low carb, high fat or um, ketogenic diets? And the biggest challenge we have is the carbohydrate content, meaning there's so little carbohydrates that people freak out. And you don't freak out because it's, um, you don't freak out because it's, um, what does it say, just because of the numbers, you freak out because of your emotional attachment to food. And that's, that is the biggest challenge. <coughs> Excuse me, because <coughs> when I say go under 20 grams of carbohydrates a day, that's basically the main thing you want to do is to, what they found, people that have done a lot of low carb work over the decades, and Eric Westman is one of the key guys I follow, he says that under 20 grams, and he's talking about net grams, not total grams, and I'll explain that in a minute. And so uh, 20 grams is like one cup of cooked veggies a day, one or two cups of cooked veggies a day with your meals, some salads, and that's about it. So the key things that you miss out on are grains, particularly bread. Uh, so if you notice part of your mind going, if when I say bread just goes, has to go out of the equation, so that means cookies and everything made with wheat. Uh, if you see your mind going, I can't possibly, <laughs> I can't possibly do without that, then you know you've got a problem with that food. And uh, so, but uh, I'll I'll just explain the, the the philosophy behind it and the principles, the scientific principles. It's really about reducing your insulin levels, because I, I like to look at insulin as Mr. Scrooge. So if you're gonna, you know, give insulin a persona, I'd give him the persona of Mr. Scrooge. And we all know Mr. Scrooge, he sits in his vault and he sits on his gold and he's not going to let any out. So imagine that's fat and insulin as, is basically a fat storage hormone. So it takes anything that comes in in terms of sugar in your blood and it converts it to fat as soon as it can. And that's mainly because your body can't deal with high levels of sugar. It's damaging to you. It's actually toxic. So it monitors your blood level of sugar at a very, very you know, finite rate. And so <clears throat> when you add anything that's any kind of carbohydrate that's got, you know, like wheat or, you know, um, licorice. You know, I'm in Finland, so licorice is really big for the Finns. They have licorice ice cream. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I did try one, but it's like it's not like an, a regular thing, and um, <clears throat> so those sugars basically stimulate insulin, and then insulin takes those sugars and stores them as fat, and then what it also does is it. Remember, I said Mr. Scrooge likes to keep his gold shut away, so insulin locks the door to the fat stores, so that you actually can't, you can't actually access them. So you're having to run, you become an obligate carbohydrate burner, so you have to run on carbs. And so you get hungry really quickly because your insulin, it takes a while to get peak up and come down. And that's one assay you can do to see if you're a hyper-responder to carbohydrates is get, get a test where you measure insulin levels over the few hours that you, after a meal, that's probably the most definitive test for how you respond with insulin to a carbohydrate load. And there's about four different types of responders. There's particular research being done on that. And, but anyway, you know, for me, I always had a problem with weight. So you don't have to worry about um, getting a test because if, particularly if you're overweight, like if it's easy for you to put on body fat, you know you're an insulin hyper-responder to carbohydrate anyway. 
And so the idea is to minimize the amount of insulin you, you put in on a daily basis. And one simple idea is 20 grams a day, which another simple idea, if you break that down throughout the day, if you're having four, four meals, say three meals and a snack, then minimize it to five grams per meal. And that's where we say like one cup of um, cooked veggies like broccoli, red pepper, tiny bit of onion because onion is quite high in carbs, particularly when you cook it. Um, then those things are actually, um, uh, that's, that's one cup of that. It's basically all you can get. And so the main thing is you, you just have to deal with that. And, you know, if you find yourself rebelling against that thought, then you just have to question it. And obviously there's a reason you're here um, thinking about these things. So I say to people, you just have to, you know, stop being a big baby about it and get over it and just do it. You know, I was a vegetarian when I first uh, looked at low carb. Um, and so I, I had to really radically change my diet to do that. And uh, I've never looked back. It's been an amazing experience. And you can hear that story on YouTube, you know, and on my blog, things like that. But let, let me get to some of these questions. I've seen a lot of things come through, but I wanted to answer the questions that were asked before on the web page. Um, so bear with me while I do that. Sue Silk was the first one. She's, she has a problem with metabolizing fat. I know Sue. Um, hi, Sue. Hope you're still enjoying Christchurch. And so um, the key is if you have a problem metabolizing fat, then, you know, gallbladder isn't working that well or whatever, then you actually you don't actually have to eat a lot of fat. That's one of the misnomers. You said, you said I'll read the question. You said, um, oh, I'll show you guys so you can see the question. See if I can work this out. So here's Sue. Oh, how do I get rid of this? So if I eat dairy like cheese, etc. on a regular basis, I get a sore throat and a blocked nose. Too much fat gives me migraine headaches and aggravates the gallstones I have. I like doing the protein and low carb part and some fat from avocado and an olive oil and coconut and a bit of dairy. So how do I do the whole keto thing? Just eat the fat that I can cope with and not worry about eating big grams of fat per day? The, the, the answer there is in that last line not worry about eating big grams of fat per day. So let's go back to back off screen. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's not about eating, even though it's called a lot of people call it low carb, high fat, it's also been called low carb, healthy fat. And um, it also been, can be called low carb, high protein, because you're really looking at getting uh, your carbs right down and your protein up. And your fat, you can pretty much, if you've got enough fat on your body, and believe me, you, most people have no matter how thin they are, they can run on fat for a while. So they, you don't have to add in a lot of fat. And that's one of the mistakes people make when they get on a, on a, um, a low-carb, H-A-L-C-H-F, low-carb, high-fat diet, is they think they have to push the fat up. And you really don't. So if you're eating you know, fatty cut of meat, that's fine. You don't have to add a lot of butter to it. Uh, and uh, you know, the zero carb people, they have an easier time with the carbohydrate question because if you're just not eating carbs, you don't have to count. Um, <clears throat> but um, even them, they just eat fatty cuts of meat. They don't add a lot of fat to it. And uh, so Jackie made a comment after yours, Sue, about um, MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides. It's about 50% of coconut oil is actually medium chain triglycerides. You can buy oil that is just medium chain triglycerides, but I don't know. There's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a recent series um, on um, <coughs> broken brain that came out, and uh, the leading uh, doc, uh, Dr. Hyman, tried to um, lead one of the researchers out, the specialist out, in about medium chain triglycerides, and she basically put it aside and packed it to the side and said, you know, the issue is really just the fat, getting the fat content in the diet up. And when I talk to my um, Pacific Island friends, they say things like, well, we never used to eat the coconut oil. You know, that was used for our skin and for our hair, but we never used to eat it. So my question, Mark, is that another one of our Western medicine or natural things that we think is good for us, which we'll find out in the next couple of decades really isn't that great. We don't know. We actually don't know. And um, 
But what we do know is in the past, they, they just used to use it for skincare. So maybe we should be thinking about that. Now I do eat a bit of coconut oil. That's great for frying, for it's a high, high burn point. But I don't eat huge amounts. Um, but I don't eat huge amounts of fat, period. So yeah, that's getting the fat equation off. The other thing you can do, Sue, is add in enzymes. Like if your gallbladder, your bile system isn't working very well, uh, then the, we do have um, an enzyme range in our, our particular range that I use uh, that has cow bile in it. So you have real animal bile. And uh, that can actually help you digest more fats. But the main thing is not to be worried about having to eat a lot of fat. If you're eating the carbs low enough and the protein high enough, and that'll be the subject of my next talk, um, then you're good to go. And <clears throat> one thing I do need to say about getting your carbs low is that if you're on anything like insulin or something that stimulates your body to secrete more insulin, then what you need to do is be really, really careful when you reduce your carbohydrates, particularly below your, what I call your carbohydrate tolerance level. And that 20 grams a day will pretty much get there for most people. Uh, some, an aside here, some people, like particularly say postmenopausal women who've always had an issue with being overweight, they will tend to need to go below 10 grams of carbs a day. And that, could, that can be a, more of an emotional trauma than going under 20. But if you do all the work to get, like some people say, get uh, say under 50 grams a day, but if you do that, if you go under 50 and you're feeling deprived and you're getting no results, then you might think that no carb doesn't work or low carb doesn't work. So that's where you have to start somewhere where 90% of people will get a result. So that's why we say start with 20 grams. And it's good to use the net grams rather than the total grams because the net grams you basically take the fiber off the total and then you get the net. And so if you went for 20 grams of total carbs you can include the you you would include the fiber as well. And actually, so I'm I'm misspeaking here. It's the total grams that a lot of people say you actually want to shoot for, not the net grams. Whereas the um, uh, the the net grams you can do 20 grams of net carbs, but that and so you take the fiber off the total, and then you ha can have a few more carbohydrates. But if you really want to do it well and and you know push the envelope, then look for 20 grams of total total carbs. And that gets us around to a question that. Um, I'll take you back to the computer now that um, Gerald asked. He says, what about beans and pulses? So what I've done here is, if it's something I recommend you do, is you go to Facebook, and if you're ever wondering how, much, how many carbohydrates are in something, you go to Google, and you just type in the word, can you see that? Lentils and nutrition. So what you do, that when you do that, if you put the word you're looking for, like lentils, and the word nutrition after it, often you'll get this kind of thing come up after it. And you can choose, you know, you can choose here, you can see, you can choose how many, I'm trying to do this with my left hand and scroll with my right. You can choose how many grams, what, what it looks like. So you can choose 100 grams, or you can do a drop down menu, there's a tablespoon or a cup. So let's go for a cup of lentils, because that's, and that's cooked lentils. So and you can see that in a cup of cooked lentils, you have got 40 grams of carbohydrate, that's the total. If you took, if you were working with net grams, then you would take off the 16. So you've got 34 grams of carbohydrate in a cup of lentils. And if you're a vegetarian, a cup of lentils is easy to do. And then you're gonna add rice at some point so you can get the amino acid balance. So then you're, <laughs> you know, you can see you just go totally crazy. And you're well over that need. If you really want to work with a 20 gram hydrate, then you're well over that, um, well over that process. So does that make sense, guys? That um, <clears throat> oh, no, actually, I didn't complete my story around if you're on insulin. Basically, people on insulin are used to measuring their blood sugar on a daily basis, many times a day, and then deciding how much insulin they actually need to inject. So they're usually quite comfortable with it. So if you're comfortable with that process, uh, otherwise, you know, go talk to a doctor or your doctor and tell them you want to try this low carb thing. Uh, if they need education, there's sites you can send them to like dietdoctor.com. Got some great information for doctors there and, and any individual really. Um, but it's doctors talking to doctors. And I think doctors will listen to doctors a lot more readily than they might talk listen to somebody else. And there's a lot of movement in that area now. So there's a lot more a lot more doctors getting low carbohydrate friendly and more understanding of the process but you know it's been said that if you look at all the literature that if you're on a like insulin or something like that 
you may need to reduce the amount of insulin you're pumping into your body by a half on the very first day that you actually go below 20 grams of carbohydrates a day. So that's a massive, massive change, and you do need to pay attention to that. The other drug that you do need to pay attention to if you're going low carb and you're on medication is antihypertensives. So if your blood pressure is high, then you need to really watch that again. Pay, you know, more, more than likely, you'll be talking to your doctor about that. And if, if you start getting more dizzy spells, basically you're getting low blood pressure issues. Because as you drop your carbohydrates, what happens with carbohydrates is insulin affects lots and lots of things. And, and one of the things it does is it makes the kidneys retain salt. So if you're eating a high-carb diet and if you're an insulin hyper-responder to carbohydrates, then your body's going to be retaining more salt. And so that's why they, they often see a massive loss of weight in the first few days of going on low carb because your body's letting go of salt and with the salt goes the water. So you use, lose a lot of water weight and that's how you can actually bounce back up in weight quite quickly. If you eat a high carb meal, you'll be retaining water along with that because you're retaining the salt. So, um, and that's another thing that can happen. Like, so that's in terms of going really low carb, the other major thing that's common happens, they call it the keto flu. And uh, that's just basically feeling crappy. And it can be things like muscle cramps. I got them at the beginning where um, you wake up in the morning, do a big stretch, and all of a sudden you're in this horror show of you know, your legs cramping all over the place. And that, that hurts. And what I've learned to do is to add salt into the equation. So for decades we've been told to go low salt, and that was me. I, I was low salt. Low, so low salt, um, basically I was a wheat-free vegan for 10 years, vegetarian for 35, and uh, low salt all that time. So for me to eat, salt, learn to eat salt again was a challenge. But And I had to do that and I had to almost oversalt my food at the beginning while I was getting these cramps to get me through that. And now I know if I ever do get cramps, I just need to increase my salt intake. So good old sodium chloride is what that's all about because you don't have the insulin anymore making your body retain salt. And then you actually know, you actually get to experience why the salt traders were such a big deal in the past that they just, I'm trying to look up at this thing rather than at my face. So, so you get me looking at you. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a strange experience, but that, that's why my eyes are bobbing all over the place. But um, let me see, was there any other questions I need to ask? And then we need to cut loose, I think. So um, answer the MCT oil question. Selena, I love that, uh, that typo about having a Mito diet. You know, it's a keto diet is really best to be a Mito diet. And um, totally okay to do that. I, I'm totally fine with zero carb. I'm not zero carb myself 100% of the time. Um, I... Um, <laughs> I would say I've, put, I've been zero carb for days on end, but not weeks or months. And there are people that have done it for years, and uh, I don't have a problem with that. As long as some zero carbs do fine with that supplementation, and other people do, because no matter how good the soils were back in the day when you know meat was roaming free, nowadays they're only as good as the grass they're eating, and uh, you know soil depletion is real. Um, so I answered the odd oh, green beans. You asked me about green beans as well, Cheryl. And like if you Google green beans, uh, like I said, green beans and nutrition, you'll get one cup of green beans has seven grams of total carbohydrate and 3.4 grams of that is fiber. So you could do, depending on if you're working with total or net carbs, you can work, work in with that. And you have to do that with everything. I basically look at it as, as having a budget. You know, and that's the simplest way I've been able to think about it for myself is I've got a budget of 20 grams of carbohydrates a day that I can have. And like if I go over 25, 30, uh, my, you'll know the difference because the fat stuff, my fat starts coming back on my belly. So that's how you know, the simplest measurement that you can do. I, I say forget about the scales. It just traumatizes people <laughs> too much. But just just do your weight measure, waist measurement, and do it when you're relaxed. Um, let your um, don't tighten your stomach. 
and do it around your navel. You know, those guys that have their waist measurement, they do their belt line, you know, below the waist, below their, or their hanging fat there. That's, that's not a waist. So do it a, a relaxed waist so you relax your breathing and measure that and see how you go. And the simplest way to look at that for guys, obviously, if they don't put their belt down, you know, if they actually put it on their waist, not down below that lump of fat that comes out, um, then it's the waist measurement's the easiest way. If you, so if your pants are getting tighter, then hey, that's just too much. And for me, 20, 25 grams of fat is pretty much all I can do. And uh, so then it becomes a budget. And and you need to look, you know, use Google, use that word of uh, idea of using the um, um, Google, you know, the word that, of the food that you're looking for and the word nutrition and look for, if it doesn't show up on the right of the screen, a, a thing you can pick a drop down menu like I showed you, then you'll have to look deeper into some of the sites because some some things just don't have that available in Google, and other others you have to like dig deeper. But do that. That's what you've actually got to do. You got to just apply a little bit of arithmetic and a lot of discipline when you're looking at a particular food. That say it's your favorite. One of my favorites. I've got it right here. I can show show it up to you. Is um, this one? If I've got a weakness, it's chocolate. And so I've I've got used to 90, this is my favorite, favorite chocolate. And look at this. So if you look at the, so get it up here. There we go. So basically work it out. You know, one of these things have got um, 10, uh, you either do it by, you know, the whole bar or by serving size. One of these, like one block, well, sorry, one square, there's 10 squares in a, in a block of lint like that. Each block has 1.4 grams of carbohydrate. So if I was just going to live on meat and chocolate, then I would be able to have, what, you know, 10 would be 14. So I'd have a whole block, but I, I, I don't eat a whole block of that in a day. Whereas when I was a real carbohydrate addict and a chocoholic, I'd eat a big bar of dairy milk in a day, <laughs> you know, make myself really sick. Um, <clears throat> but that's what you got to do. You got to look at it as a budget, and just know that you've set the budget, and you're going to be good with your budget. And f watch out for the idea of having cheat days. I really don't believe in cheat days, and because it depends on your metabolism, how fast you respond, and how how much bounce back you've got. And if you haven't got a lot of bounce, if you've got a lot of bounce back, say you're a high performing athlete, then you could have a higher carb diet and uh, you're doing a lot of gym work, you can burn that kind of stuff off a bit easier. Yeah, sure, you can make, get by with a bit more. But if Tim Noakes, Professor Tim Noakes, he says that even a high performing athlete doesn't need more than 200 grams a day. So, and that's that's pretty much what most health re people recommend, 160 to 200 to 240 grams a day for everyone. Totally, completely nuts. And um, whereas if you are, again, let's say a postmenopause, sorry to pick on women, but women actually have a harder time, not, not actually picking on, I'm just pointing, pointing it out, so to help it be more understandable if you are a woman, that just accepting you do have a harder time than men with the low carb process and getting those results that you're looking for. And uh, cheat days particularly can affect you. Like um, I've heard stories of um, women, again, postmenopausal, um, uh, history of uh, being overweight all their all their life, like from since five or nine or whatever. Uh, I, that's what my problem is. After since I went at nine, I was being chubby ever since I've been nine, until I figured out what to do. And um, <clears throat> but they can take two to three weeks from one cheat meal or one cheat day to actually get back into the full ketosis and you know working better. Basic ketones. Ketosis is a word, but basically what it means is that your body is working on ketones. And so your body can run either on sugar or fat. And it's interesting that if you want to be environmentally friendly, I love this, I really love this, you will burn a third less carbon. So you'll produce a third less carbon emissions personally out of your own body if you are in ketosis compared to not being in ketosis. Uh, your brain prefers to work with ketone bodies. Uh, it's just you get a, th a third more ATP. That's the energy that your cells are producing so that you can feel energetic and live and go about your daily tasks. 
you get about a third more ATP from the same you know level of ketones as you do the amount of ketones as you do as glucose. So it's a fantastic food for your body, and that's where a lot of people say, and I, I, this is one of the first things I noticed, how their minds just light up when they get the carbohydrates down below their their personal carbohydrate threshold, so that then they're driving, they're working on ketones. It doesn't you don't have to be in deep ketosis to make this work? You just need to get your carbohydrates down. So that's the biggest challenge is getting the carbohydrates down. And then in a later video, I'll talk about how to how to get them up, but um, and test that carbohydrate tolerance level. But usually it happens just you'll get a thought, you'll get, I'm feeling so good, a little bit of this won't hurt. And so you'll have a little bit of this. And you want to watch out. Does a little bit of this lead to a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more? And sooner or later you're back to where you were. So you've got to watch out. So it is a deep personal addiction. And uh, we, all need, we all have a certain levels of, you know, um, vulnerability to that. So let me see. I'll see if there's any questions. I don't. Just scrolling through here. Uh, Robert's asking, Where the heck am I today? I'm in Finland. I'm in Finland for a few months. Um, Robert, good to meet you in Colorado. Okay, it doesn't look like any more questions are coming through the stream. And uh, when this video posts, I'll put a couple of links underneath it so you can see some more information about what I'm talking about. And uh, thanks so much for being part of my first Facebook Live. And uh, I'll be doing more. My second one is on the second biggest challenge. I've kind of alluded to it in this video. If you scroll back through it, you'll, you'll hear me say it. But uh, let me know what you think it is. And if you have any more questions, I'll post about it before and uh, we'll let you know what it is. And right, so I'll say goodbye for now. Thanks again so much for, for tuning in. It's interesting not to be able to hear people. So just see their comments and loved all those little hearts coming. So appreciate that. I'll give you a little view of at the moment before I go. There you go. Looks darker than it actually is. The, you know, the sun, the... The light doesn't actually shine off the snow as well on camera as it does in real life. And it is still snowy. Okay. Thanks for all the love, guys. I hope that's been helpful. And enjoy your hell of your skin around again. Enjoy exploring that. If you haven't explored it before, 20 grams a day. Let me know how it goes. Okay, and remember if you're on insulin or insulin producing things or high blood pressure, be really careful with those drugs. Do what do what I said, you know, and, and look into that a bit deeper if you need to. Talk to your doctor if you need to. Okay, bye for now. Have a great day or a great night.